Maxing out your salary is the biggest mistake you need to avoid if you're trying to be financially stable, and here's why. So broke and they don't even realize. Now, check this out. Let's say you live in the U.S. and you make $3,500 a month after taxes. I'm being generous. Rent, $2,000. Car payment, $500. Car insurance, $200. Health insurance, $200. Phone bill, $100. Wi-Fi bill, $50. Light bill, 150. Water bill, 100. What's the point of making more money if you don't get to keep any of it? Who cares if you make $4,000 a month if you don't get to keep any of it? 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and that includes half of six-figure earners. 80% of you guys are in debt and don't own anything. And half of you guys don't even have $500 in your savings account. But let's call other countries poor and let's call other people poor. Living paycheck to paycheck your whole life and being in debt your whole life should be considered poverty, but it's not. And I know this is going to hurt a lot of Americans, but it's the truth. The U.S. system wants you to spend every waking moment of your life working and paying into a system that will never benefit you. Slaving away your whole life just to be retired for a measly 10 years. So, there's a lot to unpack there, so let's talk about it. Now, y'all know I've been talking about maxing out your salary for a while, but I've never been this aggressive about it and talking about it at the very beginning of a video like this so today that's what i really want to focus on and i want to talk about why it is that some of us max out our salaries and why that's such a big thing I, obviously the video explained why that's a big reason why you can't really do anything financially if your spending is just as much as you're making but we need to talk about the why because the stick figure in the video made a very good point because he said we're talking about other countries are poor y'all are poor Half of y'all are in debt, living paycheck, you know what I'm saying? So he, he made a good point in that you can have all that debt, but it might not feel like you're as broke, we'll say, as you really are. It won't feel like it because you might be driving in a car that's nicer than what you can afford. You might be living in a place that's nicer than what you can afford, but you might not have any savings to back up anything. So if something happened, even the smallest inconvenience, could mess things up and make life pretty difficult for you. And this is especially true for the people who on paper, we'll say on paper you make $50,000, but in reality you make closer to 80 because you work a lot of overtime at work. But the one time the company says overtime is cut, now all of a sudden you're back to 50,000, but your lifestyle is $80,000 lifestyle. And so now you can't afford it. That, that makes things a little difficult. And a lot of it, I hate to say it, it comes from trying to impress people but then a lot of it also comes from just general comfort and you feeling like you really can afford x amount of things you can afford the car the house the clothes the shoes you know all the things that everybody wants to have the flat screen tvs being able to go on vacations being able to say yes i bought a house yes i'm driving an audi yeah i got the dream truck i got it lifted and everything like everybody has their own individual wants and one thing that we all have in common is our wants are about expensive but then half the time we're looking at our entire amount of money that we make you know what i'm saying gross income but what we do is we look at our gross income so much your job tells you, you make seventy five thousand dollars a year so you really think you're making seventy five thousand dollars a year but the take home is like what, $58,000, $56,500? You get what I'm saying? So you have to look at that. That's the real number you need to be looking at. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's hard to be financially stable for a few reasons. Obviously, because of the video and what was said in the, that little video that we just watched, but also what I just said and, and you know, making those decisions based on personal desires, whether it's to please others, impress others, impress yourself, just be really comfortable, make your family think highly of you, whatever the case may be, there's no judgment with it because we've all fallen into that trap before. And I certainly fell into that trap when I first went ahead and moved out, got my own place and everything. And I talk more about that in my video where I talk about how I grew my net worth from zero to over $100,000 within less than a decade. But we need to talk about the reasons behind the why. And I have a few for you, but then I want you to stick around to the end because the last one is really going to blow your mind. Like you're probably not going to know how to act once I tell you about this, but just, just keep watching the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. And just for the sake of that, if you do make it to the end of this video, go ahead and leave me a dollar sign in the comments so I know who made it to the end. All right, so the first thing is probably the most obvious thing. You're not tracking your spending. We already addressed the fact that, you know, most of us are looking at our gross income, which is our total income, 
not including taxes instead of our take home income. That's what we need to be looking at. So it's impossible to properly track your spending and your expenses if you're basing it off of the wrong number, because then your budget's off base. Everything is off base. So it's important to get that part right first. And I know it won't be as amazing as you think it is, but it's better than not having a plan and not being able to adjust your expenses to be what they should be based on the proper amount of money that you make. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, your biggest expense is your taxes. So you need to include that within your calculations. The way you include that is by put what you take home as your salary per month and you budget based off of that on a monthly basis. And there's also a piece of advice I had in one of my previous videos, I'll link it up here. And it was when Dave Ramsey, you know what I'm saying? Uncle Dave made a good point. He was like, you know, no, not too many people really make budgets based off of one particular month. Like it's just kind of like a general budget and it's a blanket statement for all 12 months of the year, but hardly anyone really just focuses on one month at a time. We all know not all months are created equal. Some months we know we're going to be spending more. For example, Christmas, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, the summer months where you're going on vacation or when school's out. At least once every quarter, there is a month where you pay significantly more or spend, I mean, significantly more than you normally would. And those need to be factored in. So that's one aspect of this thing. And I've recently learned this myself, and this is something that I've also started doing myself. And the biggest thing that Uncle Dave said was those that do look at it on a month to month basis like that and adjust their budget on a monthly basis. They're the ones who find all kinds of money that they wouldn't have otherwise found. Because once you know what your spending is going to look like for the month, you are going to know what you can save and you're going to know what you're going to have to pay for in the future. You get what I'm saying? So you got to think in advance. I'm just looking down at my notes if you see me looking down. But another thing is this, not planning for the unexpected. Let me tell y'all something. Do you have a car? And you probably just, you know what I'm saying, nodded your head, yes, that you do have a car. So check this out. If you have a car, you know that car has gas. You know you have to get it maintenance every once in a while. You know every now and then you got to get an oil change. And every few years, you got to go ahead and change those tires out, especially if you're a frequent driver. Let me ask you another question. Are you a human? I know these are crazy questions, but bear with me. Are you a human? Do you have organs? Do you think that sometimes you might get sick? Or do you at least, even if you don't get sick, because I'm also someone who rarely gets sick, do you ever go to the doctor? Do you ever go to the dentist? Like, what I'm saying is we have things, right? So we have things like cars and teeth and a body to maintain. But we get baffled if a medical bill comes back a little higher than what you expected. We get so surprised when we go to the dentist and we get a cavity. And now, you know, the insurance maybe not doesn't cover the whole thing. So you have to pay some money out of pocket. We get baffled when, oh, man, I got a flat tire or oh my, my tires are getting worn. You get baffled that you have to pay money to resolve these issues. You have to expect the unexpected. If you have these things, which mostly everybody does, if you have things to maintain in life, we'll say it that way, then at some point, something will go wrong. If you have pets, at some point, they might get sick. If you have a car, at some point, it's gonna need to be maintenance. Same thing for everything else. If you have a house, you have to understand that Murphy's Law is a real thing. What can go wrong will go wrong. So if you have a house, your water heater can definitely go down. If you live in your own place in general, you're going to have to pay rent. You're going to have to pay utilities. So we have the expected that, frankly, most of us are not great at planning for our expected expenses because we're so blinded by what we can afford and we look at what we can buy right now. Oh, I can get that Audi because I make this much money so I can afford a, a $700 monthly bill on this car. I can afford it, but you forget about the things that you have to be able to afford. Not what you can afford, but what you have to do in order to maintain your current status, which 
should be good standing. And good standing is I have a roof over my head. I have clothes. I have food. I have transportation. I have a cell phone to communicate. That's what I think of when I hear about needs. We shouldn't be focused on the types. The necessity is the thing. We're focused more on the types. Instead of a Toyota, which would do just fine, like a Toyota Camry or something like that. That's a very respectable vehicle. Will last you forever. Doesn't cost that much money. But you'd rather get an Audi. You'd rather get a Mercedes or BMW just to look like you're flexing on somebody. whole time, your car payment is through the roof and you're wondering why you can't pay your bills. And again, it's not a judging type of thing. I'm just explaining the reality when it comes to spending money. And if you're watching this video, you probably watched a bunch of my videos about being financially stable. This is what you need to avoid. These are real life things that a lot of people fall victim to simply because of the fact that they're not planning for the unexpected. So we're not really looking at what is expected in the first place. We're looking more at what we want. And then when it comes to the unexpected, when a flat tire does happen, when you, know, you have to get an oil change because you've been putting it off for too long, when you have to fill that cavity, when the water heater goes out, when you get sick, and then that's when you're like, man, I can't afford this mess. This is ridiculous. I don't make enough money for this. I need a raise at work. And it can cause a lot of people to blame any and everything internal, external, but themselves. And if you felt any of that, I highly recommend that you watch my video where I specifically talk about how to be financially stable and beyond. That is a literal free course that I have here on YouTube that shows you each of the stages. And this pretty much sums up the adulting stage, especially when it gets rough, where you haven't properly prepared yourself to be within the adulting stage of the gains principle. And because you haven't particularly prepared yourself for that, and that's level two of the gains principle, you find yourself in a constant fight. And it's like you're constantly swimming and you're spending too much energy and now your arms are giving out and you feel like you're drowning. You're drowning in debt. You're drowning in irresponsible decisions. But if you would have prepared for the expected and the unexpected, and you properly looked at what you take home and made a budget based off of that, and then you started to look at your wants properly without spending too much money on them, you wouldn't find yourself in these situations. I'm not saying there's not outliers or more catastrophic situations that could come about, but I'm speaking about majority of America right now, just like that video was talking about. He gave y'all the percentage on the amount of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck, and it could actually be more than that. But he said a lot of them are six-figure earners. So it becomes less about what you make and more about what you keep. And it's not even just about what you keep. It's about what you do with what you keep. That's a hint for what's going to be the big surprise at the end. Now, we're going to talk about this. Because you haven't prepared for those things, you most definitely, and I'm not talking about you particularly, but I'm just saying people in general. And this is going to probably hit home for a lot of people is what I'm saying. A lot of you, because of the first two things, definitely don't do the third thing. And that's having a proper plan to save money and to pay off debt. Do you have a strategy to save money every month? Do you have a strategy to pay off debt? Um, most of us have debt. And so here's the thing. With, when it comes to saving, a lot of people are searching on YouTube how to save money. I used to be one of those guys looking that exact thing up. I used to be one of those guys looking at how to make extra money so I could save more money. Because I felt like the amount of money I was making at work wasn't moving fast enough. And the amount of bills I had to pay was just, just enough to where I had a little bit of money at the end of the month, but I was like, man, if this is all I got, like I gotta, I gotta work a little harder. Because for me, I had big dreams. It wasn't like I was broke or anything, but it was like, I felt uncomfortable. I felt like, no, I wanna be more comfortable financially than this. I wanna be able to provide for my family. I wanna be able to give back to my family. And I want to, whenever I do have kids, provide a great life for them. That's what was on my mind at the time. And since I've learned more things throughout my own experiences and through books I've read and things like that, I've made a ton of videos about how to save money. I've even made a video that was actually pretty popular, how to double your savings. We need to focus on that. We don't need to just focus on how to penny pinch and you know, be coupon shop shoppers or anything like that. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just not my style. You won't see me doing that. We need to focus on how to double the savings, right? And the thing is, the same way you automate your rent 
or your utilities within your bank account, that's how you need to be automating your savings. Even if you can only put away $50 a month, keep doing that until it builds up to, to more than that. And then you're putting away 100, then 250 a month, and 300, then eventually you're able to put away $1,000 a month. And I know that might seem far-fetched to a lot of people, but you can do it. There's no reason why you can't. You just got to focus on this. But then on top of that, if you don't have a saving strategy, it's definitely hard to have a debt strategy because then you're just paying the minimum payment just to say you did it. But the interest rate is still growing. And this wouldn't matter as much if it was something with a very low interest rate. But a lot of y'all have credit card debt. And if you have credit card debt, you can't just pay the minimum payment. It will not get paid off at all like not anywhere near a timely manner it's going to be like a 27 percent interest rate if you're just paying the minimum payment most of that is going to be going towards your interest and that's just not right because you still got money you owe but you're too busy paying off the interest that's going to keep growing so look at the avalanche method that's going to be the quickest way that you pay off debt. I don't have time in this particular video to go over the avalanche method, but I do have other videos where I speak on it, so I will link those up here. But you need to have a plan and you need to have a strategy. There's multiple methods to save money and to pay off debt. I just gave you two of the best ones for both of them. Now all you gotta do is execute. And when it comes to being financially stable, you gotta do things that make you financially stable. And what a lot of people don't have at the very minimum, which you know, this needs to change like yesterday. It needs to change because a lot of people don't do this. And, and this is the big surprise for the end. A lot of people don't invest. At the very minimum, you need to have a 401k and a Roth IRA. They both have very great benefits. And I have so many investing videos tying all these in where I explain in depth what a 401k is, what a Roth IRA is, why it's important to have both, the tax advantages to both, because they're both different. But then on top of that, you need to have your own individual investing account. And in my wealth journey videos, I go in depth and I show you how my investments have grown over the long term. And I even show you exactly what's inside of my investing accounts and exactly how much money's in my investing accounts. Of course, I don't have to do that, but I wanna show you the growth. I want to show you the power of investing and what is truly possible. My net worth is in the 130,000s right now. And a lot of that is because of investing. So I want you to watch this video and take notes on everything I just said, but I want you to make sure you're also making room for investing. And at the very least, you should have a 401k and a Roth IRA. Having your own individual investing account is kind of a luxury, but there's no reason why you can't get there. But these types of things, having investments in the background where you're only, you feel like you're only putting, you know, 4% of your paycheck in your investing account, but then you look and you're like, man, this thing grew fast. Of course, if you can do more, do more. So for the past like five years, I've been doing 8% or more. So it's going to depend on you and what you can afford and what you're looking at. But also if you do a 401k, make sure your company does have a matching program and make sure you meet whatever percentage they match you at because then they're going to say hey for every dollar you put in i'm putting in 50 cents and over the long term that is going to be an incredible amount of money over the long term not only will you be financially stable but you'll be able to buy the things that you really want that a lot of people are buying right now to look and feel more successful and more accomplished than they truly are. The only difference is you'll be in those things and you won't be stressed about money. You won't be drowning in debt. You'll just be living life. And that's all I want for you. I just want you to be happy and successful. That's all I want. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. And, and I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.